Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. We are back again with more Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. And this time I want to do a build of yet another villainous character, Jigsaw. Someone I enjoy reading about in the comics and enjoyed seeing in the Punisher Netflix TV series. Unfortunately, this build is a little more complicated than usual. So instead of going through the character levels and the mythic path separately, we're gonna kind of bounce back and forth between each so you have a clear understanding of how this build works. Let's go ahead and get started. This build is going to start with a one level dip into two-handed fighter, and that's specifically to give us access to some proficiencies that we need for the weapon of choice. Want to be a human, male. For your background, go ahead and choose mugger, which I believe is perfect for Jigsaw. And then for your attribute points, put your bonus and strength, get that up to 19, 14 in dexterity and constitution. Dump intelligence, if he was a smart man, he wouldn't keep going up against Punisher. Go ahead and put one point into wisdom, just because we have one extra point and you have to put it somewhere. And then we'll put um, 14 points into charisma. For your skills, we're gonna put one point in persuasion and one point into athletics. Okay, you're gonna get three feats to start with on level one. So we'll start with exotic weapon proficiency, and then we're gonna take the full charge because that has a larger critical threat range than most other weapons and it makes it perfect for this trickster build then take weapon focus full chart and then we'll go ahead and get power attack since it's good for some of the other things that we want to do as far as deity i think the answer is obvious norgerber is perfect for the thug mafia boss that jigsaw is chaotic evil of course you can't really recreate the way it looks so just choose whatever you like here and madman is absolutely perfect for him all the rest of your levels are going to be in Thug, which is under Rogue. Reason why we choose Thug is specifically frightening. Whenever a Thug successfully uses persuasion to demoralize a creature, the duration of the shaken condition is increased by one round. In addition, if the target is shaken for four or more rounds, the Thug makes the target frightened for one round. Absolutely fantastic. We're going to make great use of this and it fits in perfectly with a jigsaw build where you scare the crap out of everybody just from them seeing your face. You're also going to get uncanny dodge and improved uncanny dodge, which is going to make you significantly more tanky along with evasion. So all of this fits right in. Now, instead of the two skill points that you got for two-handed fighter, you're going to get five skill points. You definitely want to continue to increase persuasion and athletics. I would also recommend that you put points into mobility and stealth. What you do with that last point is up to you. All right, at level three, we're going to go ahead and get Dazzling Display, specifically to get Shattered Defenses later on. And then for the Rogue Talent, go ahead and pick up Weakening Wound. This will reduce your enemy's damage reduction when you are able to make a sneak attack against them. Most enemies have damage reduction, so this is actually really useful. At level four, go ahead and increase strength and continue increasing strength during your level ups. At level five, go ahead and get improved initiative and then go ahead and also get combat reflexes, which is going to give you additional attacks of opportunity per round equal to your dexterity bonus, which isn't all that large. But still, because these enemies are going to be frightened and running around a lot, you're going to get a lot more attacks of opportunity than you usually would. So it's useful to be able to do more than one or two per round. At level seven, go ahead and take outflank. You all know by now, I want outflank on all my melee and my ranged people. It's absolutely fantastic. And then for your rogue talent, go ahead and take intimidating prowess. So this is gonna allow you to use your strength modifier whenever you're attempting to demoralize enemies, significantly increasing the chance that you'll be able to do so successfully. At level nine, go ahead and take shattered defenses. So now any shaken, frightened, or panicked opponent hit by you in the round is flat-footed to your attacks until the end of your next turn. And then for your rogue talent, take fast stealth, which allows you to move at full speed even when you're stealth. All right, now let's switch over to the mythic levels. At mythic level one, you wanna go ahead and choose bit of fun since that is the trickster ascension. And it's gonna give you some extra cast of mirror image, which is gonna definitely help make you more tanky. For your first mythic ability, go ahead and pick up Ever Ready. It's going to give you more attacks of opportunity and it's going to increase your attack and damage rolls when you're trying to make attacks of opportunity. At Mythic Level 2, go ahead and get Mythic Sneak Attacker. It's going to allow you to deal an additional 1d6 damage when you're making sneak attacks. 
And then at Mythic level three, go ahead and pick up Last Stand. Once per day, when your HP drops low, you become unkillable definitely going to assist and make you more tanky. So at mythic level three, you're going to finally officially become a trickster, which means you can start choosing mythic tricks. And the first one we want to take is persuasion. Any enemy that begins combat against you is immediately affected by your demoralized ability. This means you do not need dreadful carnage or corning and smash. Enemies will automatically have to pass a check against you for demoralization and you don't have to do anything to make that happen. Now, the disadvantage of that is you can't reapply demoralization the way you could if you had Corning and Smash or Dreadful Carnage. So it becomes very important for you to run in and do what you need to do to take out the vast majority of the enemies before they turn around and start attacking you. But by doing it this way, it's gonna free up a couple of extra feats. And as you're gonna see in the um, future levels, this build is very, very feat heavy. For your mythic level three spells, go ahead and pick up Expeditious Retreat. It's actually very useful to be able to run around faster while you're in Dresden. The rest of them don't really matter. At level 11, go ahead and get Improved Critical, Fochar. And for your rogue talent, pick up Opportunist. The character can make an attack of opportunity against an opponent who has just been struck for damage in melee by another character. At mythic level four, go ahead and get improved critical, full charge. And then we get to choose another mythic level. We're gonna get perception rank one. You are under a constant effect of the see invisibility spell. Obviously there are a ton of enemies that use invisibility. So this is actually very useful. And then we're gonna take improved mythic trick perception rank two. So now this is going to unlock a special list of feats that are only available to the trickster. At mythic spell level two, you wanna go ahead and get blur and mirror image. At level 13, it's time to get started on the trickster feat. So now you have improved improved critical, which is gonna increase your critical threat range by one for full charge. And then for your rogue talent, go ahead and get double debilitation. So since you are a rogue, you get access to debilitating injuries, um, one of which is going to allow you to put a penalty on an enemy's AC up to negative eight. And then there's another that allow you to put a penalty on their attack rolls up to negative eight. Before this, you can only choose one. With double debilitation, you're gonna be able to use both of them at the same time, and they will trigger every time you do sneak attack damage, which should be often. At level 15, we're gonna again continue with the trickster feats. Now you have improved, improved, improved critical, which is going to increase your threat range once again. And then for the rogue talent, we're gonna go ahead and take crippling strike. Every time you damage an opponent with a sneak attack, you're going to do two points of damage to their strength attribute score. And remember, if your strength attribute score goes too low, it's absolutely game over. So this is very effective. At mythic level five, Go ahead and get Leading Strike. And then for your next Mythic Trick, go ahead and get Knowledge World Rank 1. What it does doesn't really help us, but the next one and the one after that will. For Mythic Spell Level 3, make sure you get Displacement. The other one doesn't matter. At Mythic Level 6, take Power Attack Mythic. And then for your next Mythic Trick, we're gonna take Stealth Rank 1. This allows you to move into Stealth as a move action, but it acts similar to the Invisibility spell. And then for our improved mythic trick, we're gonna go ahead and take Knowledge World Rank 2. Every time a member of your party would roll a one on a D20, it instead becomes a 20. At mythic spell level four, go ahead and get greater invisibility. What else you select doesn't really matter. At mythic level seven, go ahead and get Unrelenting Assault, which is gonna help you do more damage with your melee attacks. And then for your level one mythic trick, go ahead and take Athletics. What it does here doesn't really help us. And then you also get to choose a greater mythic trick. So we're gonna take Knowledge World rank three, and this allows you and members of your party to ignore requirements of feats when leveling up. Now it doesn't help Jigsaw that much because he's gonna be taking so many of those trickster improved, improved critical feats, but the rest of your party members, if they benefit from crits, they'll be doing the same thing. But if they don't, this is gonna give them the flexibility to really do some crazy things that you wouldn't have really considered before. At level 17, we're still gonna be sticking with those trickster feats. So now you get access to improved, 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 critical, improved, which is going to increase your critical multiplier by one, allowing you to do even more damage when you're able to crit. And we're going to go ahead and get a combat trick 
and get critical focus to help ensure that we're confirming those critical hits. At level 19, we finally exhausted all of the trickster feats. So you basically get one feat that allows you to take advantage of all of these feats you've unlocked. I personally like the idea of getting improved cleaving finish. Since you are using a Fulchar, keep in mind it's a reach weapon, so it will take full advantage of cleave and help you to really wipe out mobs. And then for your rogue talent, go ahead and pick up Wearing Strike. So every time you hit with one of your sneak attacks, you're also going to deal one point of constitution damage. I don't like it as much as Crippling Strike because obviously it's doing one point of attribute damage as opposed to Crippling Strike, which does two but it's still useful in the right situation, so you might as well go ahead and pick it up. And now let's go ahead and finish off the mythic level. So at mythic level eight, we're gonna take improved initiative. And then for our next mythic trick, we'll take mobility. What it does doesn't really help us at this time. And then for our improved mythic trick, we'll go ahead and take stealth rank two. This allows you to use greater invisibility as a move action, allowing you to become stealth anytime you like. And then at Mythic Spell level six, you might as well go ahead and take a couple of buffs. So you've got Cat's Grace Mask and Eagle Splendor Mask. Might as well pick them up. At Mythic level nine, I would go ahead and take Inspirational Leader. But of course, we're inspiring them with fear of retribution, not hope the way it describes here. But it's going to give you some nice bonuses for your party. For your Mythic trick, you can get whatever you want. None of these are really going to help you. I, if I remember correctly, even though the Knowledge Arcana one is actually very, very powerful, you have to have a high enough Knowledge Arcana skill rank so that you are the person who identifies the item, not one of your party members. So I don't think this is useful for this build. But if that's if there's a, been a patch or something that changed that, and now it doesn't matter who identifies the item, being able to boost all the enhancement bonus for all of your items by one is actually very, very powerful and would make this worth picking up. And then for your improved mythic trick, I would recommend you go ahead and get athletics rank two. That doesn't particularly help you. However, for the 10th mythic level, I would recommend that you go ahead and get athletics rank three. This is going to increase your base attack bonus to 20, and it's going to allow you to do five attacks um, when you're hasted as opposed to the four attacks that you would usually be able to do. So to me, that's definitely worth it. Um, as far as your mythic feat, it, it's pretty much up to you what you would like to do. I would probably go with weapon focus or flawless attack, something that's going to help to ensure that my attacks connect, but the world is, is your oyster. Okay, so now that we've went through the character levels and the mythic options, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the spell book. I already mentioned that level one, Expeditious Retreat, is all that really matters. At level two, you've got Blur and Mirror Image. Most of the other trickster spells are kind of like summons. They're not really useful for this build. At level three, you have Displacement, which is very useful. You should have somebody casting Bark Skin on you in some sort of way, but if not, Glorious Beard is going to give you a plus two natural armor bonus to DC and it's going to give you a damage resistance five against everything except slashing so that could potentially be useful for you as well at level four you're going to have greater invisibility which is going to significantly help you land those uh, sneak attacks so definitely something you want to have on yourself in some way at level five you've got microscopic proportions which is not useful for you but it could be useful for other members of your party such as Wolgif who could use the plus six size bonus to dexterity, which I believe is the largest dexterity buff uh, from size that you can get in the game. At level six, obviously you took Cat's Grace and Ingle Splendor for um, some buffs. Um, the Perpetually Annoyed Wizard, I don't know if they patched it, but back towards the beginning of the launch when I was using Trickster, as I recall, this wizard could use powers that would damage you. And so I found it kind of annoying actually to cast them, but that might be different now. And then finally at level seven, the creme de la creme, Trick Fate. Uh, for three rounds, your target ally always rolls 20 on all D20 rolls. I believe you can cast this on yourself as well. I'm not doing that for this combat example because obviously that'd be kind of cheating. But obviously this is an extremely powerful ability that can really help you in a tough fight. 
As far as the inventory, nothing you see here is really optimized. I did my trickster run as an alchemist. So most of the equipment here is just kind of picked off from other party members. You could probably do much better, but running through it real quick, the boots give me a plus 10 boost to athletic skill checks. Um, the oppressor's gloves is going to give enemies a negative two penalty on saving throws against mind affecting conditions anytime i hit them with a critical hit the belt gives me a plus four enhancement bonus for strength and dexterity and i swear yep i got a plus six belt actually that does the same thing um lore master's robe isn't really uh, relevant grenadiers have plate so you're going to need to use heavy armor but preferably one that will also count some of your dexterity score as well um the necklace is going to increase my highest current ability score by two and it gives me a natural armor enhancement bonus of five the gauntlets are going to give me an additional 1d6 damage when i do sneak attacks ring of chaos gives me a deflection bonus and continuous freedom of movement effect the ring of summon gives me a plus two bonus to weapon damage rolls and on saving throws against attacks made or effects created by chaotic creatures. The cloak allows me to automatically put on greater invisibility anytime I kill an enemy. Obviously useful for this build. The goggles are going to give me a plus one insight bonus on attack and damage rolls and a plus 10 competence bonus on persuasion skill checks, helping to ensure I can demoralize creatures. And then finally, the helmet gives me a plus six bonus on career. Charisma. Uh, as you'll notice, the charisma is a little bit lower than what you would expect since I took an option earlier in the game that decreased it by four. Um, and then if you look at the AC, you'll see that it's 51. Um, there's a negative two on it due to size. There's probably a couple of other things I could have done to make this uh, a little bit higher as far as the buffs that are available to him. In fact, I'm not sure if I even see bark skin everywhere, so I probably would have wanted to add that. Oh, but Alexia's is overtaking that. But yeah, um, 51 for someone who's considered an off tank. Remember, for most of the game, your initiative is going to be a little bit lower than all the rest of the enemies. So you should already be demoralizing enemies right when you step on the field. So this is not a character that has to do anything. So you don't have to be the first one running out and you don't have to be the person trying to take the bulk of attacks because a lot of your enemies are going to be running around like crazy anyway. So 51 should be perfectly serviceable and not an issue for the vast majority of the game. All right, so now we're in a combat example. He can't see me because I'm stealth right now. Let's go ahead and charge. Okay, so for the first attack, and we are playing on core, um, I did a critical hit and a sneak attack, natural 20 confirmation roll. Um, did two stern damage, one constitution damage, and 342 damage overall to the creature, instantly killing it. Okay, so two contaminators have now come up on me. Both of them attempted to use their tremor attack, which triggers an attack of opportunity. So for the first one, I hit. Uh, that ever ready bonus definitely comes in handy, and I dealt 81 damage. And then for the second one, I also hit and then did 84 damage. So now I'll try to attack. Killed one and killed the other. I hit and did 63 damage. Then I hit again and did 69 damage and that was enough to kill it. And then for the other one, I hit again and did 72 damage. And since we have, I believe, four attacks right now, um, we would have actually been able to do one more attack even if it had lived. All right, so now it's back around to my turn and we have the enemy here. We get four attacks again. And looks like we only need one attack. So we did another critical hit and another sneak attack. Another natural 20 confirmation roll. Strength two, because constitution one, and we did 321 damage. So I think it's very, very apparent that this is a powerful build. And as usual, I put it all mostly in one class, so it should be viable the entire game. As always, there's gonna be a spreadsheet in the description below for any of you who need to see all the levels written out. I'm looking forward to hearing your feedback about this. Hope all of you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave me a like, share this content, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I will see you all in the next video. Take care.